Ladies and gentlemen, a new version of the Java edition of Minecraft has been released. Here is Minecraft 1.13.1. This is a follow-up from the update aquatic Minecraft 1.13 with a whole lot of fixes for performance, for stability and for errors that crept in in the upgrade process when upgrading a world from Minecraft 1.12 to Minecraft 1.13. But in addition to that, there is a large amount of other additions, changes and bug fixes. My name is Sliced Lime. I'm here to guide you through the changes in this version. As usual, there are too many bug fixes to go through all of them. If you're interested in every single little bit of detail, then you'll have to go back and watch my pre-release and snapshot videos. Those contain all of the details. With that said, let's start with the changes to gameplay. If you're in a warm ocean biome, you can now use bone meal to grow coral and coral fans, depending on if you're pointing to the ground or on the side of a block. Another change to coral is that you can now place it on land, where it will survive if it is adjacent to a water stream. If it is not, then it will die and turn into a new block type, that is dead coral of all five types. A number of fixes have also been done to the new waterlogged block system that was introduced in Minecraft 1.13. Here are some of the most important ones. Concrete powder now converts to concrete properly when placed next to or falling into waterlogged blocks. Waterlogged trapdoors now update properly as well. And conduits, the new underwater beacon-like block, is now a properly waterlogged block. That means that it can be placed outside of water and sponges also remove water from them and so on. They work just like any other waterlogged block. Do note though, the conduit function of them is still a water thing. Conduits do not work unless inside of water. Back on the ocean, if you stood on a boat, then you would glitch around. That is no longer the case. And dismounting a boat or a minecart could place you outside of the world border. That is fixed in this version. Another change to dismounting, if you dismount a horse next to a fence, you will now be put on the same place as the horse. Durability fixes, tool durability now ends at 1 rather than 0, so you can no longer have a tool with 0 durability. When you use up your last piece of durability, the tool will break. Armor also no longer takes durability damage when you block damage with a shield. The radius of explosions for all exploding things in the game was increased in Minecraft 1.13. In this version it was dialed back down to the size it had in Minecraft 1.12. Crafting fix! Purple pillars can now again be used to craft purple stairs and slabs. Some fixes to maps. If you used a crafting recipe to clone maps, you will now get more maps the more blank maps you put in. Map markers could get stuck, could get blacked out and so on on maps, there's a bunch of fixes for that in this version. Some really old visual bugs with maps in item frames have been fixed. They could flicker, there were markers that could be left behind even when the map was removed and so on. Let's talk about passive mobs. Fish now have a 5% chance of dropping bone meal when killed. That is, fish mobs, not fishing. And the fish picked up with a bucket and replaced no longer count towards the aquatic mob cap. That means that you can no longer empty the oceans by putting down too many fish inside your aquarium. Squid spawning has changed. Squids will now only spawn in river and ocean biomes. Another spawning change is that villages have been fixed so iron golems now properly spawn in the village center. Mobs that get killed and end the last damage dealt being fire, lava or fire charges now properly drop cooked meat. And feeding a horse a golden apple, a golden carrot or hay bale will no longer turn the camera around. Fixes to hostile mobs too. If a zombie picked up an item, converted to a drowned and then got killed, those items would be lost. They will now be dropped in this version instead. And drowned spawning from structures will now spawn with the tridents and other held items at the same rate as normal drowned spawn. That means that it will be vastly easier to get tridents for instance in this version. If you died next to a spawner in Minecraft 1.13 then the spawner would keep spawning mobs. That is no longer the case, you now have to be alive to trigger a spawner to spawn mobs. And shulker collisions were also glitchy in Minecraft 1.13. You can now properly stand on top of a shulker again. Let's talk about redstone. A number of redstone related bugs crept into Minecraft 1.13. Observer timings was one of them they changed and now they are changing back to what they were in Minecraft 1.12. 
Pistons would also react one game tick too late compared to Minecraft 1.12 that's fixed in this version. And all redstone components were able to become stuck in a powered state when you indirectly unpowered them. Final thing is that dispensers can no longer be used to equip shields onto armor stands that don't have hands. Let's talk about some changes to the user interface too. A search bar has been added to the world list. You can type into this bar to filter the list of worlds shown which is perfect if you're like me and you have a scary amount of worlds. When you catch a tropical fish in a bucket, that bucket will now show the type of the fish if you hover over it with the mouse pointer. The fish types are listed as one of a preset list or a generic type shown with the colors. The presets are anemone, black tang, blue tang, butterfly fish, cichlid, clownfish, cotton candy betta, dotty back, emperor red snapper, goat fish, moorish idol, Ornate Butterfly Fish, Parrot Fish, Queen Engine Fish, Red Cichlid, Red Lipped Blenny, Red Snapper, Threadfin, Tomato Clownfish, Trigger Fish, Yellow Tail Parrot Fish, and Yellow Tang. If the fish doesn't match any of those, it's shown as a generic name instead. One of Flopper, Stripey, Glitter, Blockfish, Betty, Clayfish, Cobb, Sunstreak, Snooper, Dasher, Briny, or Spotty with its colors listed on a separate row. Some fixes for visual glitches in the game too. Slime blocks were missing a function to remove the internal sides from showing that is fixed in this version. And waterlogged blocks no longer produce dripping particles underwater. A weird bug that's been in the game for quite a while now too has been fixed. Entities now render properly instead of rendering kind of inside out when next to an invisible spider or a charged creeper. Sound fixes in this version too. The carving pumpkin sound didn't play properly in Minecraft 1.13. Here it is. And there was an error that led to a bunch of the subtitles for the new sounds in Minecraft 1.13 to not show up. They should show up properly in this version. There are some changes to the statistics in the game too. The damage taken and damage dealt statistics didn't work properly when the target had absorption heart. And to fix this, there are new statistics. There's a damage dealt in parenthesis absorbed and a damage dealt in parenthesis resisted statistic. And on the opposite side of that, there are damage absorbed and damage resisted statistics, as well as a new damaged block by shield statistic. One more unrelated statistic has been added, that is shulker box cleaned, which increases every time you use a dyed shulker box with a cauldron. All of these can of course be used inside of scoreboard objectives as well and the names that you need to use for that are listed on screen right now. Some changes to game rules too. Mobs can no longer break turtle eggs by standing on them when the mob griefing game rule is set to false. And the turtles no longer drop scutes when they grow up if do mob loot is set to false. And finally let's talk about command changes and map making fixes. A new command has been added to force a chunk to be loaded, that is slash force load. You add a chunk or range of chunks to be always loaded by doing slash force load add and then two coordinates that represent the chunk coordinates. You can also add a second set of coordinates to add a whole range of chunks at once. Slash force load query can be used with two coordinates to check whether a certain chunk is force loaded. This will also return a value that can be stored with slash execute store. And finally, you can do slash force load remove to stop chunks from being force loaded, either with a set of coordinates or by specifying all to remove all force loading. Fixes for specific commands, the slash set block command now works properly for textured player heads again. And teleporting a sleeping player out of a bed will now stop that player from sleeping, which stops them from glitching and teleporting back to the bed once the night ends. Lightning Bolt's summon with slash summon will now end up in the correct location. In Minecraft 1.13 this was off by half a block in the X and Z directions. The scoreboard modulo operation now uses math.floorMod, which probably doesn't mean too much to most of you, but essentially it means that negative values will react a little bit more reasonable. So if you do modulo of minus 1 with 7, it will wrap to 6 instead of returning minus 1. There are some other command and map making related changes that aren't strictly command changes. Entering long commands into command blocks could sometimes get you kicked from a multiplayer server that's fixed in this version. And error messages from functions now show the correct line number with the first line being 1 instead of 0. 
Using JSON formatting in custom names of container blocks now properly shows the formatting inside of the block user interface. A bug in Minecraft 1.13 meant that sweep attacks could knock around armor stands even when they had the marker tag set. TNT used to have an explode state in Minecraft 1.12 that was removed in Minecraft 1.13 but returns in this version as an unstable block state. Setting the unstable block state on a TNT block will make it trigger immediately when punched by a player in survival or adventure mode. And speaking of adventure mode, it is no longer possible to place liquids from a bucket in adventure mode. And that gets us to the end of the list of changes for Minecraft 1.13.1. To get this version, make sure you're online and start your Minecraft launcher. If you have profiles enabled, then select the latest release profile and the game should automatically download and upgrade to Minecraft 1.13.1. My name is Sliced Lime, I hope you enjoyed this update video, and if you did, please help me out in return and leave a like. If you want to stay up to date with all the Minecraft news, then subscribe to my channel where I post update videos about every single new version and snapshot for Minecraft. Thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you later.